ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ما بعد today inshallah we'll explain page 325 chapter 21 surah al-anbiya today is saturday 22 shawwal 1444 <coughs> corresponds to may 13 2023 <coughs> كل نفس ذائقة الموت ونبلوكم بالشر والخير فتنة وإلينا ترجعون <coughs> And we, we never granted to any human being immortality before you, O Muhammad وسلم, Then if you die, would they, the disbelievers, live forever? Everyone is going to taste death And we shall test you with evil and also test you with good by way of trial, and to us you will be returned at the end. No one has been granted immortality in this world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا جَعَلْنَا لِبَشَرٍ مِّنْ قَابِلِكَ الْخُلْدَ And we granted not to any human being immortality before you, meaning O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, in this world. On the contrary, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah, uh, surah Ar-Rahman, كُلُّ مَنْ عَلَيْهَا فَانْ وَيَبَقَى وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ ذُو الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِكْرَامِ Whatsoever is on the surface of the earth or whatever is on it, the earth. So even under the earth, uh, worms, snakes, whatever, everything that is on it will perish. And the face of your Lord, full of majesty and honor, will remain forever. Then if you, Muhammad وسلم, were to die, uh, would they be able to live forever? Meaning they hope that they will live forever after you. In other words, they'll just try to uh, kill time until you die and then they'll go back to their disbelief. But that will not happen. Everything will pass away. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Everyone is going to taste death and we shall test you with evil and with good by way of trial, meaning we shall test you. Sometimes we give you difficulties as a means of test, and sometimes we give you ease of life as a means to test you, to see who will give thanks and who will be ungrateful, who will have patience and who will despair. Ali bin Abi Talha reported from Ibn Abbas, and we shall test you, meaning we shall test you, we will test you with evil and with good, by way of trial, meaning with difficulties and with times of prosperity, with health and sickness, with richness and poverty. So the test is not only with uh, bad things, it's also with good things. Allah will test you with lawful things and unlawful things, with obedience and sin, with guidance and misguidance. All these are trials from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but at the end, to us, you will all be returned. Means then, after you come back to us, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will requit you according to your deeds. Those that did good will be rewarded justly. Those that did evil will be punished justly. And when those who disbelieve see you, they take you not except for a mockery, saying, Is this the one who talks about your gods? While they disbelieve at the mention of the most gracious Ar Rahman. If, if they are ordered to make sujood to Ar-Rahman, they say, then, and what is Ar-Rahman? And later they claim that Ar-Rahman is a man from some other, uh, from other uh, tribe or other town. Man is created of haste. I will show you my ayat, so ask me not to hasten these punishments. How the idolaters mock the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah tells his Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam 
فإذا رآك الذين كفروا يتخذونك إلا هزوا and when those who disbelieved see you meaning disbelievers of Quraysh such as Abu Jahl and his like يتخذونك إلا هزوا they take you not except for mockery meaning they make fun of you and insult you saying أهذا الذي يذكر آلهتكم is this the one who talks uh, about your gods, meaning is this the one who insults your gods and who ridicules in your intelligence, telling you that you are worshipping stones that you carve with your own hands. So they are, uh, uh, they themselves are an intelligent people and they think that Muhammad is the one who, who does not have intelligence. And this is actually the way of the people of deviation and the disbelievers. You know, when they see someone who's devoted, they mock him. They think that they are better than him. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Zuyyana lillatheena kafaru al-hayatu al-dunya wa yaskharuna mina al-latheena amanu wal-latheena attaqaw fawqahum yawm al-qiyamah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the disbelievers, they are mesmerized by this worldly life, by this dunya. And uh, they mock the believers. You know, so, oh, look how they dress, look at their uh, izar, it's, it's short, uh, look at them, they have these big beards, look at them, they have this. So, you know, for them, it's mockery, they think that they are better guided. So they disbelieve this is how they are. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, but on the day of judgment, those that have taqwa will be above the disbelievers. The disbelievers will be in the lowest have hellfire levels, while the believers will be in the highest levels of Jannah, we ask Allah to make us and our progeny and all the Muslims among them. Is this the one who talks about your gods? Meaning, is this the one who insults your gods and ridicules your intelligence? Allah says, Well, they themselves disbelieve at the mention of the most gracious. As we said, the mention before, when, when the Talan makes a Jew to Rahman, he says, oh, What is a Rahman? Meaning they disbelieve in Allah and yet they mark the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says وَإِذَا رَأَوْكَ يَتَّخِذُونَكَ إِلَّا هُزُوَا أَهَذَا الَّذِي بَعَثَ اللَّهُ رَسُولًا إِنْ كَادَ لَيُضِلُّنَا عَنْ آلِهَتِنَا لَوْلَا أَنْ صَبَرَنَا عَلَيْهَا وَسَوْفَ يَعْلَمُونَ حِينَ يَرَوْنَ الْعَذَابَ مَنْ أَضَلُّ سَبِيلًا and when they see you, they treat you only in mockery, saying, is this the one whom Allah has sent as a messenger? He would have nearly misled us from our gods, had it not been that we were patient and constant uh, in the worship of these false gods. And they will know, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they will know when they see the punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who it is that is most astray from the path, them who are worshipping false gods or Muhammad sallam. Allah says, خُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ مِنْ عَجَلِ Man is created of haste. This is like an ayah. وَكَانَ الْإِنسَانُ عَجُولًا And man is ever hasty. In all matters, you know, he is quick to get angry, he is quick to seek retribution, he is quick to, uh, to come to conclusions. And the reason why the haste of man is mentioned here is that when mention is made of those who mark the Messenger of the believers who want to avenge them swiftly. In other words, some believers, they say, okay, these guys are disbelievers. Why does Allah does not punish them right away? Why do they have to live and enjoy life? No, this is, this is haste. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, has decreed things in due times. He gives respite to disbelievers. Some of them will believe and Allah will accept their, their, their faith and others will remain disbelievers and will either be punished in this world and then the hereafter or they will, Allah will uh, postpone their punishment until after their death. <laughs> Man is created of haste because he delays, because Allah delays the punishment until a time when once Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees the disbeliever, he will never let him go. Allah delays the punishment and then he hastens it according to his will subhanahu wa ta'ala. He waits, then he does not delay any longer. So when Allah takes the disbeliever, as far as Hassan said, he does not let him go. Inna Allah layum lidhalim hatta idha akhadahu lam yuflit. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives respite to the unjust one. And just one is dhulm uh, actually comes in the in the sharia meaning uh, polytheism and also meaning doing injustice. In in both cases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
gives respite to the polytheists and also to the uh, non polytheists the Muslims who do injustice, until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees that it's time to take them with a punishment if they don't repent. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he takes them with a the punishment, he does not let them go. That's it. When the punishment comes to pass, it's it's done. As the Prophet said, So when Allah finally decrees that it's time for him to uh, submit or for her to submit to the punishment, Allah does not let them go. Also, خلق الإنسان من عجل. It was, it was also explained as Adam عليه السلام when he was first created. Allah subhanahu wa taala breathed the soul into him. The soul entered his head first, so he sneezed and he said Alhamdulillah. So the angels answered him رحمك الله. And then when the uh, when the the soul reached his eyes, he opened his eyes and he saw the fruits of Jannah. And then when the soul reached his, his stomach, he felt hungry. So he saw the good fruits and he felt hungry, so he tried to get up to go to the fruits, but the soul had not reached his legs yet, so he couldn't get up. So this is one of the explanations of Qulaq al-Insan min Ajal. In other words, the soul got his eyes, he saw these things, he loved them, he wanted to get them. When he it got to his stomach, he felt hungry, he wanted these things, and then he tried to get up, even though the soul had not reached his legs yet. So this is also one of the uh, explanations of this ayah, Qulaq al-Insan min Ajal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Sa'urikum ayati fala tasta'jilun. I will show you my ayat, meaning my vengeance, ruling over these disbelievers and power over them because uh, they disobeyed me. So do not ask me to hasten the punishment. This is also as happened with uh, the, the companion, Khabab bin Arath, radiallahu anhu. He, the disbelievers used to torture him. Uh, as he said, they would uh, uh, make him uh, lie down on his back on burning coal. And the melting, uh, the melting skin and fat from his back would be the one putting out the coal. So he, he had a lot of uh, scars on his back from this punishment. And then one day he went to the Prophet and said, Oh Prophet, why don't you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us victory over these disbelievers? The Prophet was leaning on the Kaaba. Then he, he, uh, he sat, sat up and then he told al Khabab and Arath, uh, you know, the people before you, some people before you, one of them would, would, uh, would be cut in half while he's alive so that he can leave his religion and he would not do that. But you are people who hasten Allah's, uh, Allah's decree. He said that a time is going to come when, uh, when Islam will be uh, victorious and when uh, like, you know, a person would be, a woman would travel uh, from uh, point A to point B without, without fear, etc. In other words, uh, don't, don't hasten Allah's decree. Allah decreed when the punishment shall come to these disbelievers. وَيَقُولُونَ مَتَى هَذَا الْوَعْدُ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ لَوْ يَعْلَمُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا حِينَ لَا يَكُفُّونَ عَنْ وُجُوهِهِمُ النَّارَ لَا ظُهُورِهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يُنْصَرُونَ بَلْ تَأْتِيهِمْ بَعْتَةً فَتَبَعْتُهُمْ فَلَا يَسْتَطِيعُونَ رَدَّهَا وَلَا هُمْ يُنْظَرُونَ And they say, when with this promise, come to pass that you are telling us that Allah will punish us. These are disbelievers talking. If you are truthful, O Muhammad <laughs> If only those disbelieved knew the time when they would not be able to ward off the fire from their faces, nor from their backs, and they will not be helped. That means when Allah's, uh, Allah's decree will come to pass for them to be tortured in a hellfire, they will not be able to uh, ward off the fire from their faces, nor from their backs, and nobody's going to be able to help them. Nay, it will come upon them all of a sudden and will perplex them and they will have no power to avert it nor will they get respite therein. The idolaters seek to hasten on the punishment, on the punishment. Mm -hmm. Allah also tells us how the idolaters seek to hasten punishment upon themselves out of denial and rejection, disbelief, stubbornness and a belief that it will never happen. So they challenged a messenger that said, uh, break this punishment if you are telling the truth. He says, And they say, when will this promise of punishment uh, impact us if you are truthful? Then Allah said, Then 
If only those who disbelieved knew the time when they would not be able to ward off the fire from their faces nor from their backs. Meaning, if only they knew for certain that it would inev inevitably come to pass, they would not seek to hasten it. If only they knew how the punishment will overwhelm them from above them and from beneath their feet, they will not uh, hasten it. <coughs> As Allah SWT said, from the punishments of these believers, they shall have coverings of fire above them and coverings of fire beneath them. Also Allah says, Theirs will be a bed of hellfire and over them coverings of hellfire. And in this ayah Allah says, When they will not be able to ward off the fire from their faces nor from their backs. And Allah says, their garments will be of tar because tar, when heated, it becomes very hot. And fire will cover their faces. The torment will surround them on all sides. And they will not be helped, meaning they will have no helper uh, while they are being punished. No one will be able to help them to take them off the punishment from the punishment. This is like the ayah, and they will have no guardian against Allah. Nay, it will come to pass all of a sudden. Means the fire will come upon them suddenly. That means it will take them by surprise. Death will take them by surprise, obviously. And after death, there is fire. And it will perplex them, meaning it will scare them. And they will have to succumb to it, to, to submit to it in confusion, not knowing what they are doing. Because this is not something they were expecting. When they were alive, they thought they'd live forever. They never thought about death. And then when death comes, they did not prepare for it. So they don't know what to do. Now it's too late for them to believe. And they will have no power to push back death or avert it, meaning they will have no means of doing so. Nor will be given, nor will they be given time to go back and do good deeds. As Allah says in the Quran, that when uh, the, the disbelievers see the hellfire, they will say, oh Lord, send us back to this dunya so that we can believe in your, uh, mess we can answer your messengers uh, and follow your ayat. But while they were alive, they were given all these warnings, but they did not want to follow them. So it's too late. It will not be delayed for them, even for an instant, this punishment that they were promised for so long and they rejected for as long. Next, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Huwa laqad istuhziya bi rasulim miya qablika fahaqa bil ladhina sakhiru minum na kanu bihi yastahzi'un. Qul man yaklaukum bil layli wa nahari min ar-Rahman bal hum a-dhikr rabbihim mu'aridun am lahum alihatun tamna'uhum min dunina لا يستطيعون نصر أنفسهم ولا هم منا يصحبون Indeed, many messengers were mocked before you, O Muhammad Sallallahu But the scoffers, those that mocked them, were surrounded by what they used to mock. Say, who can guard and protect you in the night or in the day from the most gracious? Nay, but they turn away from the remembrance of their Lord. Or have they gods who can guard them from us? They have no power to help themselves, nor can they be protected from us. Again, when Allah here uses uh, the, uh, the word us, it doesn't mean that it's many. It's just an honor. It's a word that the Arabs use uh, when the person is honorable. That's why even Fir'aun, when was speaking about himself, he says, uh, he did not see Lee. He did not, he did not say Lee la He said Lana la To us, they, they, they upset us. So he was talking about himself. But because he has a high status, he talks about himself in the in this form. So some ignorant Christians they come sometimes to the uh, Muslim uh, places and they say, here, see, uh, in the Quran it says us. That means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Isa. So we, we tell them, well, how do you know Allah? And let's assume us is more than one. 
Why can it not be Allah and Musa alayhi salam? Why can it not be Allah and Uzair alayhi salam like the Jews claim that Uzair is the son of God? So here you tell them, okay, fine, let's assume that you're telling the truth. But how did you understand that us means specifically Isa? So you don't have no proof. Therefore, we tell you that us does not mean more than one. It's the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about himself. Because high is he above his creature. He has a lofty status. Glory be to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. The lessons to be learned from those who mocked the messengers in the past. Allah says, consoling his messenger, salam, for the pain and insult caused by the mockery and disbelief of his people, the Quraysh, the idolaters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that other messengers before you were also mocked. But those that mocked them were surrounded by what they used to mock. The punishment they denied surrounded them. Meaning the punishment which they thought would never come to pass came to them and surrounded them. This is like the ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala similarly said, This is Surah Al-An'am, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Verily, messengers were denied before you, but with patience they bore the denial, and they were hurt by their own people until our help reached them. And none can alter the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Surely there has reached you the information, the news about the messengers before you in this Quran. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions his favor for his creatures. He protects them by night and by day, taking care of them and watching over them with his eye that never sleeps. Whether they are believers or disbelievers, and yet they don't thank him, they thank other false gods. Say who can guard and protect you in the night or in the day from the most gracious. Means other than the most gracious himself. Can your gods, your false gods protect you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? No. Nay, but they turn away from the members of their Lord. Meaning they do not recognize the blessings and favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala towards them. They turn away from his signs and blessings. Or have they gods who can guard them from us? This is a rhetorical question aimed at denouncing and rebuking the disbelievers. The meaning is, do they have any gods who can protect them and take care of them other than, than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It is not as they imagine or as they claim. Allah says about these false gods, they have no power to help themselves. You know, these statues, you take them, you break them. They cannot even help themselves. You know, as I said, in the COVID, you know, one of the, uh, the the pictures we're circling in WhatsApp is, you know, uh, they they go and disinfect the statues in 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 the uh, in in uh, in in the different Christian uh, um, they disinfected the uh, the statues in the uh, churches. So the uh, the ayah. Uh, was was put as a caption the one who is asking is weak and the one who is asked is weak who's the one asking here the one asking as Allah says in the Quran is the, the polytheist he's asking statues for help and the one who is asked the statue itself is also weak so here you are disinfecting statues. I mean, they're statues. They're supposed to disinfect themselves, right? They're supposed to do away with the, with the harm that affected you but of course, Allah Taala, they have no power to help themselves. These guys on whom they rely instead of Allah cannot even help themselves. As Subhanallah, I was just reading an article yesterday about uh, like some southern state in India where the ruling Hindu uh, Muslim hating party lost uh, the uh, lost the elections. Uh, I, I they said that uh, Modi, may Allah curse him, he's one of the evil uh, people on on in this world. Because even before becoming the president of India, when he was the governor of uh, Gujarat, he allowed the Hindus to kill and rape and burn more than 5,000 Muslims. And this is something that's not, uh, that's not in the mass media. Like 9-11, 3,000 people died. The whole world knew about it for, for I don't know how many uh, decades, not, not years, decades. They know about it. Even every year, uh, they celebrate the death of those 3,000 people. And how about these 5,000 people that, that were killed in India? Nobody speaks about them under the uh, the lordship and, and Aegis of, of Modi. 
the cops were being called and he told the cops not to intervene. So the Hindus did what they did to the Muslims. So in any event, this evil guy, he went to the south, southern state so that he can help the politici his politicians there. And then he even sung, sang an ode to one of these uh, statues that they, that they, uh, that they worship. So I was curious to know about this statue, what it is. It's called Hanuman. So when I Googled it, Hanuman is like the, the shape of a human being, but the face of a monkey. And they have many pictures of this monkey. And it made me laugh because the people join these pictures for people to worship. They are mocking the people. In one picture, you know, this monkey has a big uh, red mouth that looks like a clown. In another picture, you know, he's opening his chest and then you see uh, ins inside there him with, with a woman. I mean, you tell them, is this what you worship? You, you worship pictures that people draw by their own hands? It's, uh, I don't know. To me, to me, I, I find not only illogical, but I think stupid. It's stupid for you to worship a monkey. I mean, the person who made up this, this God for people to worship, I'm sure he's laughing his guts out at these people. He's mocking them. He's telling them, here is a monkey. Worship a monkey. Human beings worship a monkey? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made human beings better than all of other creatures. He even made the angels prostrate to them. But of course, Iblis, may Allah curse him, thought that he's better than them. So he said, I'm not going to prostrate to them, to Adam alayhi salam. So what is he doing? He's making the progeny of Adam alayhi salam prostrate to monkeys. Making the progeny of Adam said, prostrate to monkeys. This is from Iblis, may Allah curse him. So you look at these people and you ask them, can these statues help you? They have no power to even help themselves. That alone help you. Nor can they be protected from us. An Alfi report from Ibn Abbas, nor can they be guarded from us. No one can help the disbelievers against Allah. They can run away wherever they are, they go. Wherever they go, they are under the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his uh, lordship. بل متعنا هؤلاء وآباءهم حتى طعن عليهم العمر أفلا يرون أن نأتي الأرض ناقصها من أطرافها أفهم الغالبون قل إنما أنذركم بالوحي ولا يسمع الصم الدعاء إذا ما ينظرون ولئن مستهم نفحة من عذاب ربك ليقولن يا ويلنا ليقولن يا ويلنا إنا كنا ظالمين ونضع الموازين القسط ليوم القيامة فلا تظلم نفس شيئا وإن كان مثقال حبة من خردل أتينا بها وكفى بنا حاسبين This is for today we ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to teach us the beneficial knowledge to enable us to understand the Quran apply in our lives we ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to enable us to finish the explanation in the Quran and to make that in the uh, scale of our good deeds and to make it sincere for his face subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us hasana in this dunya, hasana in the hereafter and to safeguard us from the hellfire. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring back the Muslims to the two paths, especially the youth among them and make them gather on a single leader that will lead them to establish Islam and truth and justice in this world and do away with the injustice being done to the Muslims. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us and our families and our provisions. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us hasana in this dunya, hasana in the hereafter and save God us from the hellfire. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enable those that are wishing to go to Hajj this year to do that and help them do a Hajj that is accepted and forgive Allah for their sins. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala finally to gather us from Muhammad salam in the highest paradise for Firdaus. Wa akhir da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Jazakumullah khairan brothers.